Hi, and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast, we're going to look at a few more fundamental aspects of programming in Python, uh, particularly strings and booleans. So the objectives of this screencast. So the first thing I want to convey in this screencast is the concept of strings, which is how we represent and manipulate uh, text data in Python. So next we're going to expand on a topic we've covered previously, this is functions, and we're going to look at a particular class of functions that are attached to data. Finally we're going to talk about booleans and logical operators. Okay, to start let's fire up spider as usual, and we'll make a new empty script, and we'll save it in our directory screencast data pi okay so the first thing we're going to do is to look at strings so we've come across them before so let's replicate what we did right at the very first screencast this was we printed hello world to the screen. Okay, so what we've done here is we've used this print command to display the text hello world to the output. So let's just run that and now we can see hello world down there in our output. Okay, so what's interesting is that this collection of characters here, hello world, is a type of data in Python. Specifically this is a string. So we form strings by enclosing the characters in quotation marks, like this. So like we talked about before, we can assign strings to variables. So we could do something like hello text equals hello world. So now hello text is our variable um, that holds this value, hello world, the string. And then we could print hello text and save and run. So this essentially does the same thing as what we just did, but using a variable. So what strings are really is a, a collection of characters. So we can also access the individual elements of strings. So for example, we can access the first character of this string by using square brackets with an index of zero. So we save and run that you'll see is the letter H. So we'll come across these square brackets quite a bit later on as well. So the way you can read it as within the data held by this variable, hello text, access the element given by this index. So as you can see, indices start at zero. More generally, we can access the elements using three components separated by colons. So the first defines the start index, the second defines the n index, which is not included in the output, and the third defines the step. So let's, let's see an example. So what we could do is have hello text, we'll start at the zeroth index, we'll use a colon, we want to go up to, but not including the fifth index, and we want to step by one. Okay, so just have a think about what what this might do. So we've seen that the first index is going to hold an H, so that means the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, the fifth will be a comma. So what we're going to go is from zero to the comma in steps of one. So what it might expect this to produce is just the hello component of this string. So let's run it and see. And you can see that that is the case. So we've just pulled out that the, those initial um, characters of this string. So actually if we want to start at zero, we actually don't need this first um, zero. It's just assumed. So again, we can run it and check. Yep. And we actually don't need this last one either. If it's one, it's just assumed. So we can have up to five by one. Okay. Let's try um, another variation. So say, so if we don't want to go up by one, we want it to go up by two. So what do we have here? So now we have HLO, 
because we've gone zero, we're going to skip the one, we include the two, skip the three, include the four. So H L O. Okay, one final example. We can see if we go from the start to the finish, but our step is minus one. So what does this do? Okay, so you can see that now we're we're going backwards. We're starting at uh, the exclamation point and going back to to our starting point. Okay, so that's just a few examples of how we can index the individual elements of a string. So with strings, we can also use um, some of the operators that we've seen before using numbers that um, behave kind of intuitively, kind of how you would expect them to. So we can try doing something like plus. So we do. Pr so now if we say print hello text plus space from Python, and we run it, what you see in the output is that these two uh, strings are combined or concatenated um, using this plus operation. How about multiplication? How about something times two? We run it. You can see that now it's um, doubled the string. So now we have two of these hello world phra phrases. Of course, not all of these operators really makes sense for strings. So if we do something, try and do something like hello text squared or to the power of two, let's see what happens here. All right, so now we've come across our first error message. So now we see Python complaining that it doesn't know what to do when you're trying to um, use the power to combine a string and an integer or a number. So one final um, point about strings is that for numbers, once they go in quotation marks, they're strings rather than numbers to Python. So for example, if we had oranges equals two, so we don't actually have two as a number here. We have it as a, a character. So this means that if we want to do something like print oranges plus oranges, if you think about it, if this is a if this was a number, we would have two plus two gives us four. But if it's a string, what we saw before is that they'll get um, joined together. So let's see what happens. If we run it, we can see that now the output is um, two, two. So we've joined these two strings because it's not the number two, it's the, the character two. All right, so that was a quick introduction to strings. So now we're gonna look at another important component of Python programming. And we're gonna use strings as our example. And this is when functions are attached to data. Let's go back to our hello world example. Hello text equals hello world. Okay, so you can get an idea of what functions are available that are attached to an object by typing the variable, then um, a period, and then pressing the tab key. So you can see that Spider gives us a list here of all the different um, functions that are associated with this particular um, data, in this case, a string. All right, so let's go down and have a look at one. Let's have a look at upper. So now, as, as you know, we can get some information about this um, function by positioning the cursor at the end of the statement, like it is here and pressing control I on the keyboard. All right, so we see our help over here and it's telling us that what this upper function does is returns a copy of the string converted to uppercase. You can see it doesn't take any parameters, so we can use this by just having empty parentheses. So let's have a look at what this does. Okay, so now we're gonna run this and you'll see what it's done is transformed our string into entirely uppercase. Okay, so strings have a whole bunch of these uh, useful functions attached to them, but a really key concept that we're going to return to is that many other different types of data also has a set of functions available to them, and we're going to make extensive use of these in upcoming uh, screencasts. Okay, so the final thing we're going to cover in this screencast is another important type of data, and this is called booleans.
So Booleans can take only one of two values. It can be either true or false. So we can define variables as Booleans. So for example, say if we want to run an experiment and we want to say that we don't want our experiment to run full screen. So we don't want it to take up the entire screen. So we might define a variable called full screen and we'll give it a Boolean false. So note the capital F here. So we're um, creating, we're specifying that this is a Boolean data type with a false value. All right, let's say we wanted to um, add another variable which um, indicates whether this is being run on Windows or not. So let's say, let's call it is Windows and we're gonna call this one true. So now you can see we have this um, different Boolean value now, uh, true for this particular variable. So we can combine these Booleans using logical operations. So say if we wanted to determine whether we want to both run in full screen and whether we're using Windows. So what we could do is create a variable, both full screen and Windows, and equals, and the way we do this is type full screen, which we know is false, then the operator and, and then is Windows. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Print. Okay, and we run it. We see the answer is false. It's because what, what's happening here is this logical operator AND will return true if both the um, inputs are true. Here in this case we have one that's false, so it's giving us false. So a few other things we can do. We can also do um, negation. So if we wanted to work out whether it's we're not in full screen, we do not full screen. Save that and run and see it's true. So the not false gives us true. Where we can also do things like, like test an either condition. So we could have either full screen or windows. And here we would do full screen or is windows. So you can see now we have this logical operator or, which returns true if either one of its inputs are true. So let's look at this. Save that and run it. Okay, so now we have true because we had is windows is true. Okay, so these booleans come particularly in handy when we want to control the flow of our program, as we'll see in a later screencast. So this often involves testing for equality, which returns a boolean. So say, for example, we have um, a variable containing a subject ID. So say subject ID equals P1000. So perhaps at some point in our program, we want to know if, a, if our subject has a particular ID. We can test for this using a comparison operator. So we could do print subject ID equals equals P1000. Okay, so if we run this, you can see what's been returned here is true. So note the use of the double equals signs here. So this is really important and, and somewhat tricky. So what we're trying to do here is determine whether um, our subject ID is the same as P1000. So we're not trying to assign P1000 to our subject ID here. That's why we're using two equal signs rather than the one that we did before. So we can also test whether the two things are not the same. So here, rather than having two equal signs, we would use an exclamation mark equals. So you can read this as subject ID is not equal to P1000. So if we save and run this, we'll see that this is false because subject ID is equal to P1000. So of course we can use this on numbers too. So we can do print two equals two. As you'd expect, this is true. So true does equal two. Does two equal three? No, it does not. 
All right, so let's look back at our objectives for this screencast. So we talked about strings as collections of characters and how we can define and use operators with and access the characters that make up a string. Next, we looked at how we can use functions attached to strings, like how we could convert all the characters to uppercase. Finally, we discussed Boolean values, true and false, and talked about how we can logically combine Booleans and how we can create them by using these comparison operators. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.